Hi, everyone, and welcome to I3 Vertical Point of Sales second installment of our webinar series. As promised, we are going to get started here at 10 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. For those of you who weren't able to join us last time, my name is Kimberly Montgomery, and I am the Marketing Manager here at I3 POS. Thank you so much for joining us today. I want to remind everyone that you are all in listen-only mode, meaning that we cannot see you or hear you. We will have time for questions at the end, so please feel free to type your questions into the chat box on the collapsible panel to the right of your screen at any point during the presentation. I will either bring that question up during the presentation or I will wait until the very end. Please note that this webinar is being recorded and will be sent out via email at a later date. For today's webinar, we have three presenters discussing some important and highly requested topics, such as how to market your restaurant post COVID-19, mobile pay and pay at the table, online ordering, and our I3POS product academy and training portal. I'd like to take a minute to introduce our first guest presenter, Christy Christian from Synergy Restaurant Consultants. Christy brings more than 14 years of marketing and off-premise sales experience and is here today to discuss the changing restaurant environment and how you can adapt to keep your customers happy and wanting more. So without further ado, Christy, please take it away. Thank you, Kim. Thank you, team, for allowing me the, the pleasure of presenting. So I have a lot to cover in the next 30 minutes. So without um, going into a lot of intro, I will get right into it. So without a lot of warning, as we all know, our world drastically changed. And as we begin to resume opening restaurants, it's important to realize that the rules for marketing have also changed. They've been altered. And we can't just reopen with the same marketing tactics in place. You'll need a well thought out strategic marketing plan that's gonna combine safety and experience. So next slide, please. And a great, next slide, please. Thank you. There we go. So a great place to start is to look at what we've learned over the past few months. So a survey conducted by Data Essentials shows that people are excited to go back out and eat yet they still have um, some few reservations. They want to make sure that they are safe. There's a fear of crowds still. They wanna know that the social distancing protocols are in place. They're especially excited to go to sit down restaurants. They're missing those craveable items that they used to have and um, comfort foods and they wanna treat themselves. But they're still avoiding buffets and food courts and of course stadium events which there are no sadly any stadium events right now but above all safety trumps everything they need to know that they are safe at your restaurants so they need to feel safe and secure but they want to hear from you too they want to know how you are you how you are taking measures to keep them safe so use your social media outlets to communicate often with your guests and show them that you meet the safety expectations now and that you're gonna to continue to, because this is, you guys, this is a marathon, it is not a sprint. So it's not just something that we're gonna do for a month or two, we're gonna be in this for a while. So if you take the measures right at the beginning to show them that you're keeping them safe, that's gonna go a long way for securing their business for the future. And then guests still want deals and promotions. So you can't just avoid those, even though we've had hard times, you still have to give them a reason to come to visit you. They also wanna see that you're supporting the local community. That is huge right now. That has been a big uptick since the whole pandemic has begun. So next slide, please. The QSR fared best during the lockdown stage. Um, which was no surprise because they were the best suited to pivot uh, to provide meals to us when we were in the lockdown stage. Full service struggled and fine dining was hit the hardest. However, now that the turnaround has begun with restaurants opening back up and guests wanting to go for sit down, that is starting to trend up and the full service and fine dining are starting to bounce back in, um, in some big ways. So next slide, please. So now that we took a quick look at what we learned over the past few months, let's take a look now at what lives look like in the middle of this pandemic. Next slide. So 
So, so things have changed and some are here to stay for the unseeable future. One of the big things that people are filling their time with, well, the most, 62% are watching TV and movies now. And only 14% are ordering groceries online, whereas in the beginning, there was a lot of restaurants that were pivoting to provide groceries. But now it's diminishing. So that might be an area that you might not want to continue on unless you're um, perfectly suited to do that. But that one's trending down. And when they say 14% are ordering groceries online, a lot of that is through the supermarkets and the, um, the uh, apps that provide food to their door. So that's not necessarily always the restaurants. And then interesting, it's 5% that they show are trying new restaurants. So that's not, people are looking for comfort. They're looking for the places that they um, beloved and they wanna to continue to support. They're not necessarily looking to go out and find out new restaurants. So next slide. When, they, when Data Essentials ask customers, which three of the following food related activities have you done more of since shelter in place? It was 37% were cooking and baking at home, which I know that's, I fill into that 37% because I've been cooking and baking a lot at home now. And 30% are making their coffee from home and 26% are eating comfort foods and ordering takeout and delivery. 16% are stress eating and drinking alcohol more. I kind of think the alcohol one is a little bit higher than that, but uh, maybe some people just weren't as honest. And they show only 7% skipping meals or working through. So what does that say? If consumers are craving comfort foods and they have an increased um, ordering for takeout and delivery and they're not skipping meals or working through them, then this is an opportunity for us now to relook at our menus and see what are we offering? Are we fitting these trends? So next slide. So one of the positive outcomes of COVID, next slide, please. Next, there we go. Oh. Next slide. Sorry, we're one behind there. There's your comfort foods and cooking and baking at home. So one of the positive outcomes of COVID is your menu and design. You now have a green light to change your menu. So without guests being upset that you took off their favorite item, they might be a little disappointed and they might express it, but they're not going to go crazy like they have in the past. So this is a great time to optimize your menu because the guests are forgiving and they're expecting a different menu. So eliminate your dogs and highlight what you do best. And then if you have menu items that were really labor intensive or uh, a menu item that only had one ingredient that was used for that item, then cut those. This is the time to do that. And that will help you reduce your labor and streamline your thro throughput times in the, back, in the back. So it's a great time to simplify the menu and show what your brand does best. So look at what is your differentiator for your brand and highlight that and build on it and focus your menu now on the most profitable and popular items. Keep your menu small and agile and flexible. Um, a lot of places are, you have to use the disposable menus. When you do your disposable menu, don't forget to still show your brand. I've seen some places that are just doing a really cheap white piece of paper and just putting their menu items on there. You can still show your brand and design that white piece of paper that's inexpensive in a nice way. So make sure you still are taking the time to do that because this is your first foot forward to your guest. It's showing and they may be taking that menu with them because it's now theirs. It can't be used again. Um, another thing to do is continue to focus on profit. You're in the business to make money, so let's not forget that. And it's hard now that you have to pay for masks and sanitizers and all the extra things that go with this whole pandemic. And then you're forced to open, yet you need to try to look at where you can build your costs in and not make it so obvious to the guests. One restaurant I went to opened the menu and was shocked to find like three, four, five dollar increase per item. That's the wrong approach. If you need to build those costs in, you need to have your marketing team look at your menu and help you look at where they can put those increased costs where it's not going to be such a big um, eyesore for the guests and, and a, a sticker shock for them. So another thing for your menu, shareable meals, those are a thing of the past but guests are still gonna want maybe a half a sandwich and a salad or something that they would tend to share. So look at creating a single meal that has that shareable feeling for the guests. 
They're also looking for deals, as we saw in the last slide from Data Essentials. So look at, again, what is it that is your differentiator? What is it that you do best? Take your signature item and put it on the menu, maybe in the center, in a box, where you're building that signature item out. So example, a barbecue place that I work with, Tri-Tip is a great one. So we do a Tri-Tip meal deal for that individual. So now all of a sudden he's getting his deal. It's, it's focusing on our primary thing, Tri-Tip. And you can combine the, if it's Tri-Tip with add a drink for free, combine that in that, that meal pack, and then go to the next level. And underneath it in the box, have a to-go pack for that same Tri-Tip. So now you've got the individual meal Tri-Tip, then you've got the Tri-Tip to-go pack, and then go to the next level, a Tri-Tip family pack. Because remember, these first adapters that come to you right now, these are the brave ones. But they have family members, they have friends, they have people that are have not ventured out that maybe they want to take it home to. They ventured out, but yet they're going to take a family meal pack to their um, elderly parents or their family back at home. So think in terms of highlighting what you do best and then building that out for the guests to take in different levels home with them. So get also creative with your LTOs. Um, think of the welcome backpack. We're so happy you're back. Here's a welcome backpack and um, do an LTO centered around that or a dine-in family pack. So encouraging the families to come out for the first time and dine in together. Or another thing you can do is um, a family pack where you offer a free deck of cards in there and for game nights on a Friday night. Be creative and think how your brand um, operates and what would, what would be the best foot forward. So next slide, please. So you're gonna wanna drive margin and sales through your menu innovation and let your menu do the work for you. So continue to analyze your menu mix and look for opportunities to create those new menu items with better margins and wider guest appeal. Remember, this is a marathon now, not a sprint. So it's like once we get to mile 18, it's time to analyze how are things, how, how much further can I go like this? Do I need to change some things and scale back on some things? Maybe look for new ways to create some new menu items that have better mar margins and wider guest appeals. And look for items that travel well too, so that your, your um, to-go items are gonna go up tremendously. So look for items that travel well, review your portion sizes. If you start noticing that guests are taking too much home, well, that's adding to your cost because now they have takeout containers that they're requiring and bags and all sorts of extra things. So reduce the portions just a little bit. Um, so, the, and then just think of new items that are gonna give you a focus for your, for your marketing campaigns. So next slide, please. So as restaurants are reopening, most operators believe they'll be fully reopened this summer. So we've already seen a huge tick in um, restaurants reopening, but most feel that they won't be back to normal for a long time. So there's no real end in sight. Again, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. So next slide, please. So now that we've looked at what we learned in the last two months and how we need to adapt, and we looked at what consumers' lives look like and their new habits, taste, and expectations, how do we market in this new dynamic? So just because you open your doors doesn't mean that they're gonna flood in. So you can't just think that they were just waiting for you to open. Some may be, but if they come and you haven't done the right things for, to make them feel safe, they will not come back. And worse, they will tell everyone they know how, oh, this is not a safe environment. So marketing used to be all about the experience that you create, what your brand does and, and how they, um, uniquely create this experience for the guests. Well, now safety trumps all. So safety weds experience. So you need to find that balance between safety and experience. I think if you think about Disneyland getting ready to open, you know they're known for being the happiest place on earth. There's no way they're gonna open and be all about stand here, go here, wear your mask. Do you have your mask on? They're gonna be looking for ways to have safety melding with the experience that they give you. So next guest, please, or next slide, please, not next guest. So it's clear that this, the guests are only gonna come if they feel safe, yet they want that experience. So don't give them that list of rules and do's and don'ts. And remember, they're coming in a mass, 
So they're already feeling like they aren't noticed. They're already feeling they're hidden and you're hidden. So your facial expressions are hidden and theirs are. So you need to go above and beyond to smile and communicate beyond that mask and show them how much you care. And don't forget, you can go to the next slide, please. These first adapters, they're your free marketers. So it's kind of ironic. You're spending lots of money to get your operation back up and running. And once they come through the door, they're going to pay you, but they're paying you and they're going to go back and tell everyone how their experience was. And all the people that are at home are so eager to find out how was it? Were they keeping you safe? Was there social distancing? All these things. So when you have safety in your restaurant, make sure you're showing the guests, not telling them. So one of the first things like the slide on the right part of the slide where it says, we're all in this together. I created this one for a barbecue concept and we have this posted outside. He has it on his digital boards inside. So if it's out there, you don't need to talk about it as much. But if you post someone outside also, that's friendly and smiling and showing them that, that here, these are the things we're doing. Here's what you can expect from us. And here's what we ask of you. And then if they have any questions, they can ask the person. So show the guests also by equipping your team with the face masks and gloves and have hand sanitizers at the door, have the markings on the floor, use contactless payment, install shields if it's appropriate for your brand, put away all self-serving stations, and remember, invest in your team, communicate with your team prior to opening and have regular meetings because a happy team means happy guests. Next slide, please. So communi communicate clearly that the rules have changed. You wanna put, make sure that the, the lines are on the floor and signage and everything so the guests aren't confused because they're already expecting something different and they're gonna be looking for this signage outside. So make sure that it's very clear that they can see where they're supposed to go and where they're supposed to wait. If you're a fast casual, make sure that they clearly know how to order and where to go while they're waiting for their food. So next slide, please. And your SOP, remember to have a standard operating procedures manual on site. Take the time to put this together um, if you need help. I've done a few of these and um, yep, they're pretty, they, they will talk about all the details of what you're doing to keep your guests safe. And they outline your procedures, your hand washing protocols, what to do if a team member tests positive, what to do if a guest tests positive. Because remember, it's a marathon, not a sprint. So you need to be prepared. The chances of one of your team members testing positive over the next six months is probably pretty great. So you need to have a plan in place and know what you're gonna do if that happens and how you're gonna isolate them and then take the necessary um, things that are outlined in the CDC requirements, and you're gonna keep your team safe and the guests safe. So make sure you have this SOP and uh, use it in your team meetings each morning before you open. The next slide, please. So it's important to find the balance between social distancing and facilitating social interactions, because the survey done by Data Central shows that 39% are out because they're looking for socialization. They can, they've gotten used to cooking at home, so the biggest thing is socialization. So remember, you're in the people business and the majority of people are venturing out for that social interaction and they're looking for you to provide that. So next slide, please. So you need to make sure that you don't get so focused on the top priority, which is safety, that you neglect why you exist in the first place. Because remember, safety is not your differentiator. Your differentiator is what's unique to you. And you need to balance and create an experience that's unique to your brand for the guests. So you wanna build your experience around the five senses, which are now more heightened than ever for the guests. So the first thing, when a guest walks through the door, or actually before they walk to the door, when they're in the parking lot and they're approaching your restaurant, is your parking lot clean of debris? Are they seeing that there are signs out showing them what's next and what, they, what could be expected of them? Touch, 
Well, the world now has become touchless. So how are you handling this new touch-free environment? Are you creating touch-free things for them? Um, is there a touchless menus? Are you using the QR codes, which I will just touch on these throughout mine because Julio is going to go in depth on QR codes. So I will leave that to him. But as far as touching, when things come to the table, is anything sticky? Are the plates and utensils clean? So make sure that the touch is on point. Hearing, when I walk in, am I greeted? Do I see a smiling face underneath that mask and hear them welcome me and ask me if I have any questions and have I been here before? Is this my first time back? Make sure you are greeting your guests. And then taste, is the, ta is the food the right temperature? Does it have flavor? Is it delicious? question I would ask myself is, could I have made this at home? So you want to make sure your your um, your flavors are on point. And smell, when I walked in the door, did I smell something that made me think, oh, I'm so glad, I'm so excited to be here. Boy, have I missed this. So focus on that. And when the food is delivered, all the senses are clicking in. What does it look like, smell like, taste like, feel like, all of it. So be really diligent about making sure that you are looking at all the five senses and creating your experience around that. Next slide, please. So the moment a guest walks inside, their six feet, their five senses are going crazy. Do they see the six foot distancy? Are the tables six feet apart? Are, is there, I walked into one restaurant and they had caution tape on the on the tables that they didn't want you to sit at, big X's with caution tape. And I thought, who does that communicate? Danger, back away, go away. You don't wanna communicate danger to your guests. So you need to go above and beyond to figure out how are you gonna instill this six foot apart and make it look inviting. Removing tables, even if you need to get out your bolts and whatever it is that you take your tables out with, if you need to do that, well, guess what? Now you just created a more inviting open atmosphere. So make sure you go above and beyond to figure out for your brand, how does it make, how can I instill the six feet apart and still make it really inviting? And then table tents on the table, showing them that you're keeping the guests safe and that you're committed to sanitizing the tables, anything that you can do that just tells them that you know. That way you don't have to speak it, you can just show them. And then remember happy team members, lots of smiles. Really invest in your team so your team feels safe so that they're able to go out there and just let the guests feel like it's a normal experience. And then cleanliness to the extreme. Make sure you're tra you don't have any overflowing trash, that the tables aren't sticky, um, that they see you cleaning. Logs are great. Um, and then disposable menus, single-use menus. Um, and then you can, next slide, please. You can use QR codes. They're great. They're fantastic. And the guest just has to point their camera at it. This was a restaurant I went to and they did a fantastic job. Outside, they had the thing to just uh, aim your phone at it for a contactless menu so you could look outside. When you got to the table, they had something there using the QR code to show you your table's been sanitized. I would take it one step further and maybe create a space where the guests could scan it if they didn't feel something was clean and sanitized that they could leave feedback for you or either way, but you could have that QR code also go to a landing page on your website that gives them the ability to input how their experience was. Get that feedback and keep them off of social media. And then touchless pay too, the easy way to split the check. This is fantastic. I've been to a number of restaurants that are doing this and it's so easy. So um, I'll leave that rest of the QR codes to Julio. So next slide, please. So expand your outdoor seating. Oh, you guys, this is one of my favorites because I think this is another one of the positives that has come out of a very negative situation of COVID-19. We can expand our outdoor seating and the ABC has created a temporary catering authorizations that allow you to actually serve your alcohol out on the streets as well. So um, if you can go to the next slide, because I love this one. I went downtown in, I live in Ventura and downtown Ventura, they, some of the cities have gotten the permission, next slide please, have gotten permission to close off the streets. And so Ventura closed off the streets and, oh, back one, there we are. And on the left side, that's a live picture that I took last weekend. And they have lights and they have a stage with a single artist singing, but then they have, um, they have speakers throughout the whole street. So you hear 
um, the singing. And it's just, it was such a great environment. And from this angle, it does look a little busy, but when you're actually on the street, everybody was really safe. They had their masks on and every different restaurant created their outdoor space to match their brand or the ones that did it well did that so think about if you have the ability to expand outdoors whether you're on a street that's been closed down or you're just in um, a strip mall and you get your your parking lot space you still can expand out and extend your brand out to reflect it i saw one of the pizza places used um used the um Oh, I forget what you call it. Oh, pallets. They used pallets and they surrounded um, the outside with pallets. And then they actually got turf and put turf down on the inside there. And then they had wood tables and it just really had that whole fun um, vibe of their restaurant. I saw a 50s place that did like a whole 50s vibe. And then believe it or not, there was a restaurant that had opened up back in December and no one even knew about it. It was like, you looked at that and you go, oh, they're going to close. There's no way. Well, now they've expanded out into the street and their, their visual space, their footprint has come out to greet you in the midst of lights and sound and music and they're full so friends use this time this is a fantastic time where you can create a unique experience that fits your brand and really um, creates a, a fun kind of european style thing so make sure that you take advantage of lights and music and misters and heat lamps make sure your guests are comfortable and if you're a fine dining establishment and you don't have this opportunity, well then look at the way you can expand your footprint with catering, with banquet events and promote special events, birthdays, anniversary parties, et cetera. So just check with your CDC guidelines. I know California, they expanded it to 100 people. So that's been great. Um, next slide, please, Kim. So off-premise sales, they've experienced a huge boom driven by the COVID pandemic. And the full service brands saw the biggest increase in third party adoption. And the number of consumers ordering from third party apps doubled in April, 2020 compared to um, 2019. So restaurants that have limited seating capacities will continue to offer this off-premise growth. However, it's thought to slow down as this pent up demand for guests to get out and go to dine-in um, is picking up. So next slide, please. So continue to, whoops, oh, the off-premise sales hospitality touch points. So five senses that we discussed for your in, in, in um, experience needs to transfer to off-premise sales. There's a heightened sense right now of food handling practices. So make sure that when you have your to-go items go out, include a card and show them how you're keeping them safe and thank them for ordering from you and trusting you. Make sure you really look at your packaging. Does it reflect your brand? Because now more than ever, this packaging needs to reflect your brand. It needs to be with a tamper-proof seal on it. You need to maintain the temperature. If you're serving French fries and a hamburger, well, you need to separate those. And the fries need to be in a compartment that is um, not going to cause that moisture to make them all soft. So just make sure that you really take a look at your, your, um, your, your to-go containers. And then if you are able to do delivery yourself, then make sure that that experience is getting transferred. So your driver has to be exceptionally friendly and think about the touch points when they ring the doorbell or they come to the door, all those senses are kicking in. And remember the touch list, be considerate of the guests and leave it far away so that the guests can come and get it unless they ask you to hand it to them. So just really review with your team that any off-premise sales have to have all those senses and hospitality touch points involved. And the same goes for your app and your website. Your app, if you have an app, it needs to be clean, easy to order, and offer some special um, rewards for your app users. And then your website, it needs to be clean and well-branded and easy to navigate. I see a lot of brands right now just going to kind of the quick uh, default and that was okay when we were locked down, but now it's time to really up your game a little bit and make sure your apps and your website looks really clean and like you care, because just like a clean restaurant, you need a clean website. So show them how you're keeping them safe on there as well and make ordering to go very, very easy. So next slide, please. So on the off-premise sales, 
Um, we talked about the guests are still looking for deals. So look at creating some value added specials. Make it easy for families. We already know that families are at home right now. We know date night comes and guests wanna get out. Some of them aren't going to be, but create some chef driven meals that can be, that will transfer to go very well. And then create a Zoom meeting pack. Everybody's doing these Zoom meetings. So why not get on with that and create a special Zoom meeting one because when people are on Zoom, they're sharing too. So that's free marketing for you. And if you create a fun like charcuterie board on Friday night with half price wine and maybe like a little Zoom, something fun and creative in there that matches your brand, then the guests are going to be like, oh, what are you eating? And like, oh, I got this from, you know, XX place and they look how great this is. Well, guess what? Next week, they're probably going to go there. And then front yard picnic packs, that's another thing. Front yard parties are becoming pretty popular. So jump on that and create something unique to your brand that really speaks to that. And then offer a bounce back because you wanna create this new habit in these guests. So once they've ordered from you the first time, thank them and say, thank you so much. And here's something for your next, next um, time back because we value you so much. And then above all, on these off-premise sales, ensure accuracy every single time. It is so important that a guest, when they order something and they're so looking forward to something like this that they haven't had in a while, that it is perfect and right. So, all right, next slide, please. Kim, <laughs> there you are. All right, lastly, um, no touch, no contact. So um, for one of the bad to the bone brand that I was working with or am working with, we created um, QR codes for, he, he used his parking lot, he had a large parking lot and when everything was on lockdown, we created these signs that were at the front of the parking and the, each parking spot had a space. So all the guests had to do was point their phone at the QR code and the whole menu came up on their phone, they could order, it went directly to the kitchen, they placed the order, and then inside they would bring, they would see which spot the person was at and they would bring it out. So the guests never had to get out of their car. So look at ways that you can do some contactless um, delivery for curbside. Also look at contactless outdoor kiosks, those are fantastic. I, I'm sure that, that all the bright people are out there coming up with some lots of great ways I know that there's going to be, um, I've heard of one place that was doing a locker where once you placed your order, you got a specific code to unlock this locker. And when you went to the locker, you just put in your code and boom, it opened and your food was right there. You didn't have to touch any doors or anything. It was automatic. So I'm sure there's going to be a lot more things like that in the future. All right. All right. Over to you, Julio. Excellent. Thank you, Christy. Really appreciate you sharing. Can everybody hear me okay? Kim, anybody? Oh. Yeah, you're coming through just fine, Julia. Okay, yeah, just wanna make sure. Can. I don't wanna do a, a 15 minute presentation and no one hears me <laughs> on mute. So um, good, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Julia Wachovi with NCR and um, I just wanna thank everybody for joining us. Um, I'm gonna spend a few minutes discussing some new payment options, uh, a few new ordering options as well. Um, Kim, if you can, next slide, please. One more. We can, uh, we can, we'll back one, sorry. So I'll just continue talking. So as we, as we know, things have changed at an unimaginable rate. Um, we've all had to change the way we run our businesses. And the two top questions I receive all the time are about payments and off-premise ordering. And um, you know, many of you may remember we we launched a product called Mobile Pay about uh, about seven years ago, and then discontinued it about two years ago. And the reason why it was is because nobody really used it. People people didn't understand what a QR code was. Phones didn't have QR codes uh, scanners built into them, and so. Um, we really created a problem, or sorry, created a solution before a problem existed. Um, and so the good news now is that scanners are built into almost every camera on every smartphone. So the technology is now part of a phone. And then obviously we have a we have a problem now we've got to overcome with the solution. So mobile pay has been a huge, huge success with a lot of our customers. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, as you know, um, there's a there's a 
a ton of um, strategy around how do we make our customers feel comfortable. And there's a, there's a recent study by Data Essentials. Uh, they found that 44% 40 of all customers would, would require contactless payments to be in place before they felt comfortable dining at a restaurant. So that's a, that's a huge stat. Uh, next slide, please. And we're going to talk about some of the operator challenges. Um, so one of the things is meeting guests in their new normal. Um, we, want, we want guests to be reassured. Um, they're watching everything we do. A simple sneeze can be the reason why a guest won't return to a restaurant. Uh, so we want to make sure every single detail is considered. And I think Christy did a great job kind of outlining a lot of that. Um, and some of it is technology. Um, we want to make sure that, um, that everything is as contactless as possible. You know, I mentioned the 44% earlier. And um, it's, a, it's a huge thing that people are looking for now. So we think that with COVID, it really, it really fast forwarded um, the technology that was already on track. It just sped it up a few years. Um, we wanna also accommodate various digital payment options. Guests want flexibility. They wanna be able to pay with Apple Pay. They wanna pay with Google. They wanna pay with a credit card. Um, so we wanna accommodate the different ways they wanna pay. And then um, we want to make sure that um, we can deliver technology at a lower cost. Um, some technology can be very costly. And so we want to be very mindful of, of the way that we're building technology so it's, it's as inexpensive as possible. Next slide, please. OK, so our, our new what, one back, please. There we go. Um, so one of the things about this product is it uses a smartphone and there's no need for additional hardware. Um, you don't have to purchase tablets for every, every term, uh, table. It uses your existing smartphone to, to facilitate the transaction. Um, so one of the things NCR is doing is we're, we're looking at um, the new norm. We're interviewing a ton of customers and we're looking at what do restaurants want? And, and so obviously contactless payments, um, you know, digital menus, um, maybe being able to order at the table through your own smartphone. And so we're working with our engineers to build new solutions. We'll be sharing a few of them in the future. I'm going to give you a sneak peek at the end of this presentation on some of the order at table solutions we're coming out with. But um, it's exciting. I think, uh, I think technology is really going to make a, a huge impact in the way we do business in restaurants moving forward. Next slide, please. OK, so what's needed? What do guests want? They want something easy to use. They want an application that allows their guests to pay a check regardless what iOS they're using. You know, many companies don't want to, to download apps. Um, it, it's too disruptive. You want something as simple as possible. So um, the good news is our restaurants, you know, they want integrated solutions. Um, they can be transacted in real time. I think a lot of times you'll find solutions that come to market, they look good, they look good on PowerPoint, and then when you implement them, you realize they're not integrated. And so how do you keep track of payments? Uh, so the idea here is restaurateurs want something that's as efficient as possible in the restaurant so that they can um, they can reconcile at the end of the night. Pretty simple. And then our platform allows for future enhancements. So we're building something thoughtfully where uh, it, it's going to we're going to build on this platform and, and we're going to continue. Um, we're going to merge products together. We think there's a great opportunity to, to merge online ordering with pay at table. So we're working on some of those technologies. We don't want to have several different types of solutions out there. You know, you don't want to download an app for this and then go to a website for this and then provide feedback, go here. So we want to try and integrate as much as possible so it's as simple for the guest um, as possible. Next slide, please. Okay, so mobile pay is guest driven. It's a, a contactless solution. Um, not only improves the guest safety, but it, it drives employee satisfaction with faster table turns and increased tips. Uh, we've used it for seven years. We've got a ton of data, and um, we find that when used correctly, a lot of times the tips are are increased. Um, you can you can set the defaults, and I'll show you a couple um, uh, pictures in a few minutes. But you can set the defaults, and so we find that when implemented correctly, tables are turned quicker, tips are a little higher than normal. Next slide, please. Okay, so this is kind of a, a idea how it works. Um, so what happens is the guest check is printed. There's a QR code on the check. I think Christy had a picture of that in one of her slides. And it's going to have a QR code. So if you know what to do, you scan it. There are people out there. I think Richard still has his iPhone too. And um, and so for, for users that don't have a QR code reader, you simply go to ncrpay.com. 
you put in the check code, the receipt will guide you through it. And then um, what you'll see is a digital representation of the check. And uh, you can verify the check is accurate, and then uh, you can add a tip. You can you can process the payment, and and it should go through pretty seamless. Um, next slide, please. Okay, yeah. So all yeah, all sorry, one back. So again, the, the beauty is that no hardware needed. You just use the guest's smartphone. They facilitate their own transaction. They're very comfortable with their phone, obviously. Um, so. Um, works really well. Uh, the other thing is, I get this question all the time, I'm sure people are thinking this now, well, how does the server know that the check has been paid? And the way it works is the next time that server goes to any terminal in the restaurant, it's going to pop up a message when they log in, it's going to say table five is paid. So they know and they have to acknowledge that and then they can walk, watch that guest walk away. The other thing that's great too is as soon as that guest sees an indication on the phone that says paid, it's completed, the transaction is, is done. It's not queuing up somewhere where it could possibly fail later. So the guest is notified that it's completed and then the server is notified that it's completed as well. Next slide. So mobile pay provides um, value to your guests, peace of mind, makes payments easy, um, improves the overall experience and I think Think about Amazon. Many of us have used Amazon quite a bit, especially during COVID. And the thing that, that appeals to people is that it's so easy to order. Sometimes it's, it's too easy and you order things you didn't realize you ordered because you accidentally hit a button. So the idea with this is that we want to design it in a way that is so easy for your guests to use that they're likely to come back. And they remember your restaurant. They remember how easy it was to pay contactless and walk away. So that, that's a huge um, plus. Next slide, please. And then it also provides value to your brand. So um, if you think of Starbucks, uh, you're, you're more likely to return to Starbucks because they've made it incredibly easy for their guests to order. And so um, if you think of coffee and you've got five or six choices, you're in a new market, you're traveling. If you have a Starbucks app, you, you really gravitate towards Starbucks because it's super easy to order. And so they've, made a, they've, they've done a great job um, delivering value to the brand. And so in the same way, this product helps to de deliver value to the brand as well. Next slide. Okay, you might have to toggle a couple times, um, Kim. So this is the roadmap. And so here's where we're at today. We're, we're, uh, we're introducing the, uh, the mobile pay. We, we, we decided to kind of re-architect the product. We had a ton of functions in the app. Uh, we had it for seven years and we thought, okay, well, it's not selling. Let's add more. It's not selling. It's year two. Let's add more and more and more. And it became it became so big that um, we decided, okay, what do people really want? They want payment. Let's start with payment. And so today it offers payment at table. Um, it's got a branded use, branded user interface, so it will look and feel like your restaurant. And uh, you've got some server stats in the, in the back end reporting, and you have the ability to save an account. Um, next slide. So in 60 days, we're going to be expanding this. Uh, we're going to offer quick service. We're going to offer more of a mobile wallet with Google, Apple, and a few others. We're kind of um, adding adding that today. Uh, should be ready in 60 days. And then we're going to be adding Aloha loyalty to the product as well. Um, we we had, I talked a little bit earlier about um, being able to add more and more to a single product. Um, so it has that um, kind of united experience and it's not another thing to do. Um, and then in, in 90 days, next slide, uh, we're going to be adding a customer voice, which is our survey tool, and then the ability to pay with stored value, which are our gift card solution. And then in the future, next slide, we're going to be um, working on split checks and, um, you know, Venmo, some, some enhanced branding and things like that. So we'll be expanding international on, on this product. Um, so that's kind of the, the roadmap of where we're at with mobile pay. Um, we're also working with our ordering teams as well to kind of see where it's going to kind of land. Uh, we're, we're soliciting feedback. I've spoken to many people on the call today about, um, you know, what is your vision for the way payment should be handled at the table? And what is your vision for the way ordering should occur at the table? And, um, and so we're taking a lot of that feedback, providing it to our product managers, and they're, they're listening and they're adding it a lot. They're adding it to the product, which is great. So. I think these are the two most popular 
products and we're getting a lot of senior support. So a lot of our leadership is, is giving green lights to develop these products into the future. Uh, next slide. Okay, so yeah, mobile pay, it, um, it's safe contactless payment, increases table turns, improves guest satisfaction. Um, next slide, please. Okay, so with, with mobile pay, um, there's, I'm sure people have a lot of questions. We've got a ton of salespeople that will be happy to help anybody on the, on the call. If you've got any questions, please reach out. Um, there, there's a lot there. It, it's moving rapidly. Um, the question, we did this presentation about a month ago and the questions came, um, they came flooding in. And really the biggest question is, when can I get it? How soon can I get it? I need this installed immediately. So contact the sales team. Um, what we're doing is we're working on putting in prerequisites into the restaurant and make sure you have you know the latest versions and everything and then when we're ready to launch this product uh, kind of relaunch it we're going to be installing it as fast as possible so we're kind of going through a controlled deployment in the month of june and then we expect to really launch this thing uh, pretty strong in july um, i'm going to take a couple minutes and talk about some of the other payment solutions that we have um, we've got some physical devices uh, pay at table devices so next slide please kim So this is the Equinox Lux. It's a wireless, it can also be tethered, and it's pay at table. So very slim, fits in your apron, nice device. It does support contactless. So, you know, Apple Pay, Android, Samsung, Google Wallet. It does have a chip reader for EMV. And, and we like this device. It's real small, so it's easier to clean. You can clean it in between uh, shifts, in between guests, and uh, it's, a, it's a great device. Um, works well in a quick service environment as well if you wanted to tether it. Um, if you look at the Starbucks footprint, they have a very small EMV device at the register, and then some companies have the larger um, screen for order confirmation and things like that. So we do have a couple options there. Next slide. So this is the, the larger Equinox device. This is the one I just mentioned. It, it has the uh, the order confirmation capabilities and it has a lot of other capabilities as well it's it's just a bigger footprint so if you prefer that we have that solution um, these are very quick um, they, they they process emv chips very rapidly um, a lot faster than some of the older technology so i think as as time goes on the the technology is getting faster and faster uh, for, for emv transactions so we're excited about these two new products next slide Okay, so that's a, it's a mobile pay, that's a couple of hardware devices. And then the last thing I wanna share is a, kind of a sneak peek on table service um, or order at table. So um, next slide. So this is our online ordering product. What we've done to it is we, we've added the ability to pay and order at the table. So traditionally you've had the ability to order for pickup or delivery. Um, the, the biggest, I think the, probably the biggest um, question I got from the field is, you know, how do we pay at the table? Can we make this work? And, and really the only way is we have to know where they're sitting. We've, we've got to know where their, their, what their table number is. So we've developed some technology. We're, we're continuing to develop it and we're, we're expecting this to be released in controlled deployment in July. And then hopefully we can get it um, to general release as soon as possible. And um, really what it is, it's, it's using the existing online ordering rails and uh, the way it would work is you'd have a QR code at the table you scan the QR code with your phone and it will um, it will pull the table number in so many people don't realize this on our current online ordering there are links you can embed into you know a website where when you click the link it, it brings you right to that restaurant and so we just added some more technology that furthers that and adds you right to that table number so it in, embeds it into the app or the, the phone then they, they present their digital menu and then they can order from there. Um, and I'm gonna show you a couple screenshots that I've got. Um, it's kind of hot off the press. So next slide, please. Okay, so um, imagine sc scanning the QR code with your phone. You're presenting with the digital, um, the digital menu and um, you can log in. So this is integrated to loyalty. So if you do have loyalty, it will, it will pull it in. That way you can track the spend of that, that particular uh, guest user. And then you can browse the menu. Next slide. Select the item, um, add to the order, review 
review the items there. And uh, next, next slide. Send the order to the kitchen, close the check, and then you can check out as guests. Now, the thing that's interesting is if you kind of looked at the last couple slides, they had pictures on them. So if you wanted to make the digital menu pop, add a lot of pictures to it, it'll make it look a lot nicer. Um, but the idea here is being able to pay at the table, send it to the kitchen, kitchen knows exactly where to bring that check out to, and then you can you can complete that transaction and, and check out as a guest. So that's that's new. Um, there's a lot, there's a, actually a pretty big roadmap on this product. Um, there's a lot of things we're considering to make it easier and kind of blend it in with mobile pay uh, because there there is a there is a time where we have, we realize that, that there are going to be many guests at the table that want to order through their phone and how do you do that? How do you facilitate that? So there there are ways we're building that. So this is kind of the high level sneak peek. Um, I'd be happy to talk to people about what their view of this is if they think it's going to be a, a viable product for early release um, if there's gaping holes in it. But um, so far, we've interviewed several customers, and they, they love the idea of this product, and it will work for kind of a minimum viable first run. And then, and then our roadmap is very aggressive on this product as well. So next slide, please. Next slide, Kim. There's a, a delay there, so really, just you just choose the, the method of receipt delivery, and then and then you end the transaction, and that's really it. So that's that's all I really wanted to share. There's a couple options on the payments. We've got the mobile pay at table. We've got physical devices where you can pay a table or EMV at a, at a quick service environment, and then we also have um, ordering at table coming out in July for control deployment, and then hopefully early August we'll have it to be able to deploy. So the nice thing is, is with online ordering. If you're if you're working on online ordering now, if you're working on our fast track um, promotion, or if you already have it, you're building the rails, which is going to make this happen sooner. So if you're starting with online ordering now, by the time you get ordering running and uh, for pickup, we'll be able to add this feature on um, in the near future. So that that's all I have. Um, appreciate you guys listening. Uh, if you have any questions, we're happy to answer any questions afterwards. Uh, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, who will um, who will continue the presentation and close us out. Thank you very much, Julio, for that. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Mark. Uh, go ahead and go to the next slide for me, Kim. So my name is Mark Rugolda. I'm the training coordinator at I3 Point of Sale. Um, I handle the training programs for the Aloha product, um, the Aloha POS, Aloha Manager, um, Configuration Center, ATO Kitchen, you know, our whole suite. We're building this up. Um, so hopefully, if you're not already familiar with me, if you haven't been trained by me in the past five years or haven't had emails with me, um, hopefully I hear from you soon. My contact information is on the screen now. Uh, any questions you have about Aloha, uh, operations, best practices, anything like that, hopefully you can reach out to me. Um, outside of just talking to me as a trainer um, or as a authority on how the Aloha point of sale system operates, next slide, please. Um, we're also managing a online learning management system, the I3 Point of Sale Product Academy. And what we have there is a whole solution of video trainings and documentations, links to external sources to help you improve your mastery of your Aloha systems so that you can get the most out of our Aloha products to really maximize its effect on your best business. I mean, all of you here, you're using Aloha, you know about Aloha. It's, not a small investment to get this Cadillac system. Knowing how to use it, knowing that your team knows how to use it uh, is a good way to safeguard your investment. And that's what we're trying to address. So when it comes to back of the house training, the big programming part, you, your managers, what you need to do, we have 15 training series on Aloha Manager programming. We have five training series on how to operate and utilize the front of the house. We have three training series on connected payments, uh, and we're actually currently working on and close to releasing um, two whole new courses on the Aloha takeout and delivery functions, and that's gonna end up leading to a whole suite of tons of video content for all of you. So those of you who aren't familiar with Aloha takeout, hopefully you'll be able to get into your I3POS account and uh, watch some of those videos when they come out and then talk to your salesperson about getting set up with that. Um, but for the content that we currently have out now, it is optimized uh, already for 
the situations that we're, we're all going through. As Christy pointed out, 62% of people during COVID-19 are using this time watching movies. These video trainings are short movies. So if you're hiring new management team as you're starting to reopen, or if you're hiring new front of the house staff who maybe hasn't had restaurant experience before, or at least not Aloha experience before, have them use some of that time watching these movies. They can learn how to use the front of the house. They can learn how to use the system to pull reports and add employees. And that way, when you reopen, you and any new team members you have are ready to hit the ground running. And that's what we're here trying to make sure that you're able to do, be as successful as possible. Next slide, please. So outside of just training, you know, COVID-19 threw everyone's lives out of whack. Um, and so you know, how do we operate? What are the new operating procedures that are being mandated by our city governments, state governments, federal governments? You know, what do we need to do to make sure that our teams are safe, that our customers are safe, and that we can keep operating the best we can? And to that end, um, we at I3 Point of Sale have been trying to get ahead of those questions for you and release video training series uh, specifically to answer some of the questions you may have about how to reopen with your Aloha system. Currently, on i3pos.com forward slash coronavirus, you can access for free, you know, whether you have a help desk contract or not, whether you have an i3pos product academy account or not, you can access these COVID specific trainings. The three that we currently have out are editing your floor plans. We'll show you how to change your floor plan to match the new seating capacity limits that have been mandated, um, or to change your floor plan to show that you've expanded your seating capacity. So one of the things that Christy talked about was expanding that into the outside so that you have a wider area so that you can maintain social distancing, but maybe you're not losing as many tables as you would have otherwise. So we have how to edit your floor plans quickly and easily and then switch them back to um, your original pre-COVID layout. The most recent ones that we released were interactive messages and alerts. And for those of you who aren't familiar with these two functions in Aloha, they're really useful, especially considering the times that we're in. So with the interactive messages, this is a way inside of the Aloha point of sale system to target your employees right before they clock in to start their work, to ask them a yes or no question as to whether or not they meet certain criteria. So the example that we're giving inside the video is, have you done your temperature check? Do you have a facial covering? Have you washed your hands? All these things to make sure that our people are safe and they're answering yes, it allows them to clock in. And if they answer no, well then the system's gonna bring up a manager's requirement to clock in so that that manager can help this person out getting their facial covering if they forgot it at home or whatever it may be. Uh, we also show you how to track those results in that video. The other one is with alerts. So, you know, you heard Christy talk about this quite a lot, and you heard Julio talk about it, the need to keep things clean. There's a lot of high touch surfaces in our restaurants, our terminals, our payment devices, the tables, the chairs, the doors, the bars, everything. People are just touching things, and we need to keep them clean. So, rather than delegate that job to one or a few individuals and just verbally assign it to them, uh, which takes more of your brain power, your manager's brain power. What we're going to learn to do with Aloha is to use the alert system to just spread the news out to the staff that a job needs to be done. So we can actually set a timer up inside of Aloha to notify our team at the front of the house that, hey, you know, someone needs to disinfect the door handles. Someone needs to go ahead and clean the tables. We need someone to wipe down the payment devices every, call it 30 minutes. And we can have that sent to everyone, and then the person who completes it can clear that alert for everyone else, but it gets done in a timely manner, and all of us are sharing in the responsibility. You know, that phrase we keep hearing, we're all in this together. And that's what we're trying to be able to do here with the built-in abilities that Aloha already provides. Next slide, please. So, you know, we've got the I3 Point of Sale Product Academy. We've got the coronavirus um, training videos that are coming out. So how else can we leverage this? Well, for those of you who have a help desk contract and haven't heard about the I3POS Product Academy, or for those of you who don't have a contract and still would like to get access to training, reach out to me. We can get you set up with the training account so that you can log in and start accessing the video trainings that we have available. You can access our entire library of documentation on different Aloha products that we have. 
Uh, and mind you that the video trainings and the documentation library are constantly growing. We have all of our product experts here at I3 Point of Sale developing documentation, giving ideas for the next video training. And those are being curated, developed, and posted as soon as they're ready. So they're always going to be up to date for you. Uh, we also have webinars that we're offering. So there's actually one coming up mid-July. It's going to be about the setting up tip share programs at your restaurant. We have certifications that you can get. So if you assign training to one of your new hires, you can say, hey, they're front of the house certified or they're certified to do this with the, um, the back of the house system because they not only watched the videos, done the homework, but they passed the test and you know they know what they're doing when they touch your investment. So you know, reach out to me, do more with your system, do more with your team, manage Aloha. Don't just manage Aloha, master Aloha. Last slide, please, Kim. So if I've piqued any of your interest in getting set up with training, with um, reaching out to me with questions you may have about Aloha, or even giving me feedback that you may have about training programs you would like to see, questions you have about new coronavirus operations and how Aloha can be leveraged to make your life easier, reach out to me. I'm happy to provide documentation, answers, consultation, feedback, whatever I can. So you'll see that my email is right there at the bottom. You've got my phone number to my desk and you've got the link to the training part of the i3pos.com website. Um, but that's my presentation. Thank you all for, for coming. Uh, it's good to talk to you. I'm gonna pass it on to Kim. Thank you, Mark. All right, let's get on to the question portion of our presentation. So let's see. So before we close out today, I'd like to go over some of the audience questions that we received in the chat box. Please feel free to type in any questions or follow up questions that you may have now. The chat box is on the right side of your screen. Also, if you haven't been receiving my emails and would like to stay up to date on important announcements at I3POS, please type in your email to that chat box and I will be sure to get you added to our mailing list. And also, I will send out our, pre, our guest presenter, um, Christy Christian's contact information. If you have any questions or are interested in her restaurant marketing and off-premise sales services, I'll be sure to email y'all her contact information. Okay, let's see what questions came through during the presentation. So the first one is rather specific, is bad to the bone barbecue using up and go and Aloha online ordering. I'm not sure if anyone I, knows the answer, no, yes. I don't believe they are using either one of those. Okay, thank you, Christy. Um, we are asked, can the slides for the NCR mobile pay get emailed to us? I have quite a few restaurants I want to share this with. Yes, of course. Um, please send me your email in the chat and I'll make sure you get those slides. Let's see. We have a loyalty program through Patronix. Have you thought about integrating loyalty programs, non-Aloha loyalty in the pay at the table? I think that's a Julio question. Yeah, there, those are definitely considerations. We, we do have some some custom options as well. So see mm -hmm. us, uh, ask us offline. We'll be happy to talk to you about that in detail. Perfect. Another question: Can you run tabs with Mobile Pay? Good question. Okay. Um, I, I'm not 100% sure on that to check with the, with the team. Okay, we'll have a rep reach, reach out to you when we get that answer. Yeah, you know what I was gonna say, Kim, it, wh whoever that is, if they can reach out to us one-on-one, -on -one, we'll, we'll spend some time uh, kind of diving deep into that. Okay. Because, because what it is, it's on the check. So it's it's any check that prints, um, we'll have a QR code enabled on it and you can pay for, pay with it. And if you have a scenario where if you split the check, each check will have their own respective QR code. Um, so you can you can close those out. So that's that's how it works. Perfect. Next question is NCR Mobile Pay a competitor of Up and Go or do they work together? 
I'm currently building my ATO plus Aloha online ordering plus up and go platform. I'd like to build it right from the get go. Yeah, so um, up and go uses the mobile pay API. So the exact same agent that installs for our product is what is is installs for up and go up and go is a partner. So we, we have several partners um, with many of our products. So some of them are some of them are competitive. So yeah, it is a competitive product. Um, but the way we look at it is like your iPhone, you have several choices on, you know, different apps. Some of the apps come native to iOS and some you would you would choose to buy something, you know, maybe different that fits your business differently. And so those are options. So I, I would just say that they are a partner. They're in our partner guide. We we uh, we actually have a good relationship with them. And uh, you you just you choose what's best for your brand. Perfect. I'm seeing a lot of emails come in. That's awesome, guys. I will add you to our emailing list. And if you have specific questions about cost, um, about some of these contactless solutions, you can reach out directly to Julio or your, your representative. Are there any other questions? Oh, we still have everyone on the line. That chat box is just on the right side of your screen. Let's see. I have a question for Christy. Christy, it says you talked about having a QR code available for the menu. What if a guest or what if guests don't like looking at small menus on their phones? Right. So once again, it's showing that you are keeping the guests safe. So if a guest isn't having a, a problem with actually touching a menu and they request the menu, then make sure that you have disposable menus on site that you can hand them because Again, it's all about the experience. And even though a guest is able to pull a menu up on their phone, sometimes they want to look at it with their friend and share and decide. And they want to see the whole menu at one time rather than kind of trying to scroll through. So make sure that you make the guest experience the top priority there. And don't make them feel bad for asking for a menu. Have those on site and just hand that to them. Awesome. I see another question came through. Does NCR Mobile Pay allow you to send a text to pay? It's on the roadmap, but it's not currently in the in the first release. Great question. Up and Go does though. Up and Go will allow you to send a text message. I think that's one of their new features. But yeah, Mobile Pay is it's, we're coming out with it. We're actually designing a really cool user interface for that. So um, stay tuned. Ooh, exciting things to come. <laughs> Absolutely. And keep sending your questions. We'll just go for a few more minutes here. Um, let's see. Uh, I have a question for Mark. Is there a fee for a training account or is it free? Yeah. So um, if you have a current help desk contract with us, um, you get, you know, if I haven't set you up as a new site already, um, just email me and I will configure your site and set you up with um, two active accounts. Uh, those are just account slots. You can replace them with different people if you experience turnover, but the active help desk contract gives you those two active um, account slots and those accounts can access and share training uh, as much as they'd like anytime that they'd like. If you would like to purchase, um, additional active account slots. Maybe you have three managers or four managers that you want active in there, whatever it may be. You can do that. The accounts are set up for $50. That gets those account slots active for the whole year um, with unlimited access to training. And again, if there's turnover, you can just swap who that person's account is with no fee inside. You just let me know who to swap it to. Um, but yeah, so that's the fee there. If you don't have an active help desk contract, the same fees apply reach out to me, I'll get you set up, and um, it'll be $50 per active account. You won't get the two free ones, but that'll be active for a whole year. So it's not very expensive to get access to this stuff. There's a ton of answers inside of there. 
Um, and if anyone has any further questions with that that you don't want to ask here or you don't get a chance to, shoot me an email at any time. I'm happy to respond back an email or give you a call. Great, great. Thank you, Mark. Well, I'm not seeing any more questions come through, so I think we will close this out. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us this time, and I hope to see you next time.